The uh, position is for a secretary. Then the agency shouldn't have given you my name. My typing and shorthand isn't good enough. Assistant, then, with some minor secretarial duties. I sent her all the details. She chose you. Really? You're a teacher? A games mistress, yes. Teachers are good at organising. Mrs Owen is expecting a lot of guests. Whereabouts in the country? The Devon coast. Soldier Island. The coast? Audrey's been telling me about it from her magazines. Haven't you, Audrey? Some Hollywood film star was supposed to have bought it, but no. It's Mr and Mrs Owen. And you've met them? No, everything by letter. An island by the sea? Islands are generally by the sea. The box, if you please, Audrey. Um, I, I don't... Maybe I'm not suited. You are who she wants. And it's very well paid. There's a permanent position on offer, if you fit the bill. Yes, but... For immediate expenses. And, and this is for a, a play in the West End. And will I be credited in the programme? Ladies and gentlemen, silence, please. You are charged with the following indictments.
Oh, well, here are the others. I'm Ms. Claythorne, mm? Mrs. Owen's secretary. Mm. Are you Mr. Narricott? Well, ain't no one else holding a sign. We're already taking two over. Fussy old maiden, some flashy young lad. Been in and out this arbor like a fiddler's elbow. Sea dogs. They have their own etiquette. Well, good afternoon. General McCarthy. Good Lord. What an honor to meet you. Wargrave. Justice, Wargrave. The honor's all mine, sir. Retired from justice now. Mr. Lombard. Philip. And you, sir. Davis. Are you coming or not? Well, shall we? Welcome to Soldier Island. Right. Come along. So is there a problem? Well, that's as far as my field take me, sir. <sighs> God's sake. Uh, Davis? Davis? <laughs> I'd be grateful. Of course. Well, Rogers, our hosts, 
When can we expect to meet them? We should be a full house by tonight, sir. Ah, afternoon. Tony Marston. Well, I look forward to meeting you all at dinner. A stiff G and T in my room. Sir. Did Mrs. Owen leave any instructions for me? I'm the secretary. Only to ensure that you were comfortable and had everything you wished for, Miss Claythorne. Now, if the gentleman would follow me, Mrs. Rogers will escort the lady. Oh, thank you, Davis. Did my friend Mrs. Colmington, uh, Mrs. Constance Colmington, did she change her plans, do you know? No, I'm afraid I don't. Mm. Ridiculously vague. Huh. Oh, I'm sorry, I only just recently got the job. No, 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 not you, Miss Claythorne. I mean this whole arrangement. The Owens invited me here to meet my friend, and she's not even here. <laughs> Very strange. Very strange indeed. Hmm. Can I help you? Here. Oh, too kind. the state of you. I've got to base my beef and my souffles, Thomas. What about my souffle? Well, I can't dress her, can I? Go on. Was it a childhood affliction? Your eyes? No, madam. Came on all suddenly. Shock, maybe. Sudden change. Begging your pardon, madam, I don't know. You must know. Begging your pardon, madam, I don't. I always think it's rather a weakness to be so affected by something in one's circumstances. Rather indulgent. Almost vain. We must be strong, Mrs. Rogers. Especially in these times, we must be valiant and virtuous. 
We must be English women. Yes, madam. And a little advice. In future, a splash of eau de cologne before you come upstairs to attend on the ladies. I appreciate it's hot work in the kitchen, but there's no need to announce it quite so emphatically. Beg your pardon, madam. Tinder goods. Troops. The war, the war. Tin goods. Judge Walgrave, I'm terribly sorry for the clumsy introduction. I'm a terrible traveller. Completely lose my bearings. Are we on time? Only just. Ah, uh, sir. You're ready sooner than we'd anticipated. What's up there? Just roof space, sir. Ah, uh, sir, I've been advised that the footing isn't particularly sturdy up there. Best avoided, lest you make an unexpected entrance into one of the bedrooms, sir, uh, by way of the ceiling. May I show you to the drawing room, sir? Perhaps an aperitif whilst you await the other guests. Ah, Mr. Davis. You look like a man who could use a drink. Hmm. Oh, very congenial. Perhaps a small snifter? Mr. Rogers, lead the way. Is there something you're looking for, miss? Because this is the below stairs, miss. For staff. Well, I am staff. Miss, we had very strict instructions that you were to be treated as a guest. Guests don't come below stairs. It rather sounds as though you're asking me to leave. How many more are you expecting with the Owens? We shall know when they arrive. And how will you cope? Just the two of you? Rogers and myself is competent. More than. So, if you please. Young girl. What an idyllic evening. The sky. <laughs> How can one not believe in a creator? Davis. Emily Brett. Edward Armstrong. Too. I imagine there's one in every room. Well, Soldier Island, it makes sense. It's amusing. I have a strong suspicion our hosts are inclined to whimsy. 
I cannot comment on our hosts. Good little secretary. Excuse me. We've got off on the wrong foot, haven't we? But you do have very pretty legs. It would have been remiss not to admire them. Mr. Lombard, you seem to be under the impression that I am a particular kind of woman. And I assure you that I am not. I do not like to be looked at. I get instincts about people. I have an instinct about you. I think you're pretending. A drink, Mr. Marston? Pink gin. Pink as a virgin's blush. Didn't catch your name. Philip Lombard. Irish. You must know the Corcorons. Great chums of mine. Endlessly simpatico. Anyone who's anyone knows them. Are you a betting man, Lombard? It depends. At some point this evening, one of those crumbling old rogues will start talking about the war. And then they'll ask us both if we aren't damned sorry to have missed the last one and how we should be gung-ho to do our duty in the next. Not that there's going to be a next one. There's always a next one. So how about it? A bet. The odds are too short. <laughs> Listen to them. Clinging on. I mean, they think they still mean something, but nobody at all would notice or care if they just... I'm going to be exceptionally charming to them. Oh, all right, Miss Claythorne. If it will make you happy, I'm sorry for staring. Mr. Lombard, I doubt you're ever sorry for anything. Smart girl. Ladies and gentlemen, lobster souffle. Hope it isn't too rich. I always dine so modestly at home. Mm. I won't. Thank you. Thank you. We've met before, you know. Oh, forgive me, my memory is not what it was. Perhaps you gave evidence before me. No, no, it wasn't that. I'd remember that. Something else. It'll come to me. I'm not at all sure about these. They look very pagan. They're the Ten Little Soldiers. You know, from the poem. Mm. I know it off by heart. When I was a little boy, my nanny used to recite it to me. I imagine she wanted to terrify me into being, into being good. Did it work? Well, I've always been a stickler. Yes, stickler for the rules. I was probably a rather dull boy. <laughs> I really can't imagine that, Jim. Although, you shouldn't call it a poem, Miss Laythorn. It's doggerel. Poetry should be uplifting. I agree with you, Miss Brent. Well, that just shows how wrong first impressions are. I didn't think you were the type of gentleman to appreciate poetry. Mr. Davis has hidden depths. Souffle is delicious. Mm. Very light. Over 40 years in criminal law, I've come face to face with the most depraved examples of mankind and felt no fear. But I quail in terror, Miss Claythorne, at the thought of young ladies brandishing hockey sticks. <laughs> We're not so bad, Judge. A little overexcited and noisy sometimes. Well, the prerogative of youth. And I'm sure you set them a very fine example. Well, sometimes you dread what filth they're going to serve. But this is actually very decent. The Owens always generous hosts. 
Friends of yours, Mr. Davis? Business acquaintances, uh, I mean, tinned goods. The firm started off supplying troops with stew. The tinned goods is what helped us win the war. Well, I suppose, I suppose an army marches on its stomach. Here we go. Hmm. God, I remember that stew. RAMC, I presume, Dr. Armstrong. That's right. Clearing stations and then hospitals in Belgium and France. Or perhaps you're being interviewed as well. Interviewed, General? Yes. Mr. Owen is an amateur, but very knowledgeable military historian. He's writing about France, about the decisive God's action. sake, it's over. Oh, no, I'm, uh, I'm just here to get away from it all. Interesting man, Mr. Owen, and an interesting name. Ulick Norman. How funny. Mrs. Owen is Una Nancy. Matching initials. I must confess I was a little worried about the Ulick. Given the current climate, it might be seen as somewhat <clears throat> Teutonic. Hmm. You couldn't hope to meet a more patriotic man. And what could be more English than Norman? Oh, <laughs> it's magical. Look, Mrs. Rogers has the gift. Well, she might look like the undead, but she can definitely cook. When might we expect the Owens? Have they not telephoned? Well, there's no telephone on the island, madam. Mr. Narricot brings messages along with the post and kitchen supplies every morning, and I imagine tomorrow he will either bring a telegram from the Owens or they will accompany him. Uh, uh, Rogers, give that Narcot chap a couple of bob asking to watch my car. It's parked up by the harbour. To Jensen. Of course, sir. I shall pass on your compliments to Mrs. Rogers. Look here, Davis. The Owens, are they fun-loving types? Fun-loving? Yeah, because there's something a tad off here. Now, I had a letter inviting me to a house party. Pretty young things. You know, champagne, music. And apart from Lombard, who looks like he could cut up a bit lively, the rest of you don't really look like fun-loving house party types. No offense. Your car, the Jensen. Well, you saw her. Isn't she a beauty? I honestly can't imagine loving a person as much as I worship and adore the Jensen. You ran me off the road. No, I didn't. You ran me off the road. When? I was driving along, minding my own business, when you overtook me, going God knows how fast, and you ran me off the road. Well, I saw someone going at a pitiful speed. I don't care, Marston. I think an apology and a handshake between gentlemen would be just the thing here. But I haven't done anything wrong. You ran me off the road! Well, I might have overtaken you, but my great aunt drives with more zip, and if you can't control your car, then you really shouldn't be behind the wheel. You little shit! You ran me off the road, and then you have the temerity to tell me it's my fault! Careful, old boy, getting a little red in the face there. Gentlemen, please, there are ladies present. I'm sorry. It's been a long week. You're right, General. A handshake between gentlemen. Come on, Armstrong. Put it there. Let's be pals. Rogers, I'm out of cigarettes. Yes, sir. So what battles were you involved with, General? Well, I served on the northwest frontier, mm -hmm. in South Africa, and, of course, in France. <clears throat> Win any? I loathe this convention, leaving men to their cigars and their stories. Convention, Miss Claythorne, is what keeps us together in the face of impending chaos. Is it time? You start serving. No, no. No, I'll pour the coffee. 
You must be very busy in the kitchen. Miss. Excellent dinner, Mrs. Rogers. The Owens are lucky to have you. That will certainly be telling them so. Thank you, madam. Whereabouts is your school? Um, I, I doubt you've heard of it. It's not particularly well known. Not particularly good either. Why do you say that? Otherwise, you would not be needing employment in the summer months. Their fees are not high enough, nor is their pay. Not that I disapprove of you seeking employment and being busy, far from it. But why teach in a third rate establishment, producing third rate girls? Barely worth your time and attention, I would have thought. Ladies and gentlemen, silence, please. Who is that? You are charged with the following indictments. Edward George Armstrong, that you murdered Louisa Mary's business. I don't know, sir. Emily Caroline Brent, that you murdered Beatrice Taylor. Who is this? What's the meaning of this? William Henry Blore, that you did murder James Stephen Lambert. Vera Elizabeth Clayfall, that you did murder Cyril Ogilvy Hamilton. Philip Lombard, that you did murder 21 men, members of an East African tribe. John Gordon MacArthur, that you did Where's murder this Henry from? Richmond. Anthony James Marston, Let's go, Rogers. that you did murder John and Lucy Coons. I never heard of him. Lawrence John Aubrey, that you did murder Edward Seaton. Thomas and Ethel Rogers. That you did murder Jennifer Brady. Thomas. Prisoners of the bar. How do you plead? Took a turn. I'll go fetch my bag. She'll be all right. I'll be the judge of that. A record. It's called Swan Song. The hell are they playing at? Huh? What the hell are they playing? Oh, You'll tell the devil. So gone, Marston. He doesn't know them. He's not Davis. Sergeant William Blore. How did you know? Instinct. I need a drink. Barely. These grotesque false accusations. Indeed, General. Well, we should wait for the Doctor and Rogers. We should wait till everyone is together. Well said, Tubbs. Let's all listen to the police. I told you! Pull yourself together! Stop flapping 
that trap you dumb see Becky. Thank you. Rogers is coming. Well, Rogers. See, are, are my instructions to put the record on at such a time? We were told it was to be a surprise, a, a party game. Oh, some party game. You were in the room with us. There's a delay on the record. Somebody went to a lot of time and expense. If I'd known what was on the record, I'd never been a part of it. What is said about me and Mrs. Rogers, never. Nothing in it, then. Miss Brady were like family to us. We did everything for her. She weren't well, frail as a bird, but on account of how she left us a small legacy, well, some folk will say anything to her. There's a lot of jealousy amongst domestic service, I'm afraid to say. Below stairs is very often a nest of vipers. Thank you, Rogers. We'll ring if we require anything further. I've had more than my fair share of lazy and vindictive stuff. I believe, Rogers. It doesn't make any sense. I've never even met a John and Lucy Coon. Delicious nonsense. Louise Cleese was a surgical patient. It was risky. There were complications. Everyone knew that. But the moment anything goes wrong, it's blame the bloody surgeon. No one's blaming you, Doctor. Well, someone is. Henry Richmond was one of my finest young officers who fell in pursuit of his gallant duty for king and country. It is repugnant that these Vile rumours should be given credence. Repugnant. Edward Seaton was guilty. I was party to uh, evidence that was not admissible before the court, but he was guilty. The only time I laid hands on Landor was to put handcuffs on him. He was a degenerate and a drunk. He choked on his own puke. Sarah, the little boy, I was his governess. He wasn't supposed to swim. He wasn't strong. But he sneaked off. And I... I wasn't a good enough swimmer. I just wasn't good enough. I tried. I really tried to save him. His poor mother was broken. She was so broken. I had to be rescued. I almost drowned. Say something like this. Some sort of vicious joke. Well, if that's your sense of humor, there's something wrong with your wiring. Time for the funny farm. It was pinpoint accurate about me. 21 men. I always thought someone would blab. It's amazing how people get an attack of conscience when they're safely tucked away in their beds. man. It's people like you, men like you, that put our missionaries in such danger. Oh, your missionaries with their God and their syphilis. I am not the only white killer in Africa, Miss Brand. Lombard, you, sir, are a bloody butcher. And I'm holding my hands up to it. So either I'm embellishing a story for shocking effect, or I'm the only one telling the truth in a room full of liars. How dare you now, take what? that as <clears throat> enough. Please, ladies and gentlemen, enough. What good could it do? My feeling is that we should retire and be ready to leave tomorrow with Mr. Narakot. What if the Owens are with him? We confront them, but we leave. 
And despite Mr. Lombard's devastating confession, we are all victims of a cruel hoax. We shouldn't dignify these accusations with any more debate. Agreed? Certainly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John and Lucy Coombs. They must have been those two kids. I mean, what sort of parents let their kids play out in the dark, for God's sake? It's completely irresponsible. Now, I lost my license for six months. It was a terrific nuisance. Oh, you were driving, were you? What a surprise. It was jolly bad luck. That's all. Yeah. I didn't stand a chance. I wasn't even driving that fast. You can't, not in England. It's not like the continent. I mean, they understand motoring over there. Say what you like about the crowds, but their roads are magnificent. The Jensen loves them. I can really open her up and let her rip. <laughs> Ah. Well, perhaps we ought to get rid of the stimulant out of respect to the family. Don't want to cause a scandal. It's a police matter now, Doctor. Same set of rules if you're posh or not. Very well. Yes? Who is it?
Dr Armstrong? Yes. What is it? Can you come, please? Dead for some hours. I'll, uh, I'll inform the others not to expect too much in the way of breakfast given the circumstances. No, sir. Full breakfast will be provided. Good man. Best not to dwell. Keep busy. How did you get up? Has Mrs. Rogers got worse? Somewhat. She's dead. Dead? I didn't know sleep. It's quite peaceful. Nothing to be alarmed about. Oh, wait. Wait. I, um, I came down here to wait for you and, and I saw this. Please. A bit late for the kiss of life, Tobes. Smart ass you are. Have a sniff yourself. There were ten of them. From the nursery rhyme, the poem, yes. Yes. Count them for me, please, Dr. Armstrong. There are eight, aren't there? Eight figures for the eight people here. Tell me I'm right. Please tell me I'm right. I'm sure there's a perfectly rational explanation for this. Almonds. Almonds be buggered. Cyanide. I trust you're not going to unravel on us, Miss Clayford. Hysterical women are so boring. Cyril, behave yourself. Listen to Miss Claythorne, dearest. No! Oh, that's incredibly naughty. I'm so sorry, Miss Claythorne. Oh, dear, he's getting all worked up. Cyril, you will make yourself ill. What's all this now? Uncle Hugo! I can hear you shouting from miles away, you young rascal. Oh, thank heavens, in the nick of time. Olivia, you look absolutely radiant, <laughs> as ever. Mm. Empty flattery. I'm completely rattled and utterly hideous. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Hugo, this is Miss Claythorne, who was doing so much to help Cyril in the schoolroom.
Have you been for a paddle, General? What are you, Lombard? A mercenary? Gun for hire? Soldier? Not from any army I'd recognize, but still. Soldier of sorts. You don't need to worry about what I am. There's always a moment, isn't there, before the attack. The advance, the bombardment, the chaos. A moment of absolute calm. Listen. Doesn't this feel like that moment? I was never a man for calm, General. can't see the harbor from here, which means they can't see us. We are cut off. Rats in a barrel. This is the peace before the carnage. not just die for no reason. They die because something was done to them by someone. There's a Fenian sat over there with a bloody gun. No one's coming for us. This is the end. Don't you dare touch my possessions. What have you got to hide? The whole morning, clearing up dust. You've got some bright brass, Nick. We are all being hunted. If there's someone else on this island, how am I find them? I'm gonna make them number 22. And Then There Were None continues at 9 tomorrow here on BBC One.